covering the Northern Bahamas? You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. History records that it was on April 11, 1963 in the House of Assembly that it was suggested that females be allowed to join the Royal Bahamas Police Force. Just over one year later, that vision became a reality. Since then, women have been performing at all levels on the force, and tonight, Megan Shepard talks with one of the first females to join the force who recounts her experience. I jumped at it because it sounded exciting. Woman police, we never had woman police officers. And I always like, I always like to venture out. That was me. Hildreth McLean, along with six other females, made history in the Bahamas back in 1964, as they were the first group of women to join the Royal Bahamas Police Force. 122 women applied for the opportunity, but after six interviews and a physical test, McLean got her letter to report to the barracks on November 23, 1964. It was a clear, cool, crisp day. I can never forget that. Every time I feel the cool coming in, it goes across my mind. And then the papers were there, the media was there, we took pictures, and we were introduced to different departments with their, their hierarchies and the commissioner of police and his staff. And uh, the girls, we were introduced to each other because we were all strangers. But they did not get any special treatment just because they were women. McLean says that they still had to work hard during their drills, training, and of course, have the spotless uniforms during inspection. We got up at 6 o'clock, 5.30 in the morning, really, and we had to roll those beds. You couldn't go out there unless your beds were rolled up. And these weren't beds, these were little bunks. So we had to roll them every morning, and then we would stand on the side of our doors, and we were known by numbers, not our last names. Two, three, four, sir. And then they will go in ready for inspection. So everything was sir or yes, sir. After inspection, we will go and we will have uh, drilling, not, not drilling, we will have our exercising period. After exercising period, we'll go into the canteen for breakfast. Never taste so much bad food in my life. I never used to eat, really. <laughs> and then it was time to start their duties. Before we, we left, we were assigned to school. We had schooling. We had law. We had uh, science and uh, geography and, and different, different parts of the, the penal code. We had to learn those things. And then we had a passing out exam. And that's when we were dispersed to different stations. Now, that was exciting, too, because being on traffic and being on CID. CID was hectic because if you, you would work from, you never stop working in CID because the minute you came in and you write those reports, you had to put in your reports before you leave. And when you're getting packing up to go home, go back to barracks, it's another call coming. McLean describes her time on the force as wonderful and exhilarating. It was a new era for the country and indeed the men on the force. She says although they were given a hard time, they were eventually accepted and welcomed as a part of the team. And first of all, they did not want us there. Oh, that was horrible. <laughs> where are these children going? <laughs> Especially me. They said one day, that little girl need to go back home. What she's doing up here? <laughs> and after thinking about all of it, they all accept us afterwards, you know. We had wonderful trainers. Uh, lecturers, they were all nice, and they all treated us like they we were their children. As women continue to break glass ceilings in the country, McLean says she is proud of the women on the force today. To all women of the nation, she offers this bit of advice. So much technology in the world now, and uh, if you don't educate yourself, you can't get anywhere. It's no longer like when I was uh, around and when I joined Customs. Oh, I've been here for so many years and you're looking for promotion. That's not anymore. You must be educated, especially our young women. Educate yourselves. Take care of yourselves. McLean says she hopes to one day witness the first woman police commissioner in the Bahamas. Megan Shepard, CNS Network News. In other news, since Bonaventure University of New York, the Grand Bahama Port Authority and the University of the Bahamas Northern Campus are gearing up for a three-day business seminar. Sessions will take place on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday of next week at the Mary Star of the Sea Auditorium at 6.30 p.m.
Monday and Tuesday will be management and social media seminars. There will be certification attached to it so that people can come and get certified in those, in those particular areas. Absolutely free. And we're even having some great business prizes because we like people to come out. On Thursday, we're going to be doing something quite different. We're going to actually be doing a uh, consulting day, a mini consulting day. And we're going to actually ask uh, local uh, businesses to come in here and talk about their issues and different things like that. I know that the consultation and the business seminars would be excellent for new business starters, for new business owners, for those who already have um, businesses already designed and would just like to take their business to the next level. The Port Authority's partnership with these entities is another example of our commitment to the Grand Bahama community and particularly to the small business owners. As we continue to do programs and initiatives on the island, each and every year we add more and more to what it is that we can offer for these persons to be successful. Adam Ditcher, representative of St. Bonaventure University, says starting tomorrow, they will be in the community giving back as well. Anyone that would be interested in helping us to serve the local community, to meet us at the Royal Islander Hotel at 8 in the morning, we will be doing uh, trash cleanup, working on some projects that we have lined up. Um, I know that we will be working at a vocational school. Uh, we also, in Enactus, while we're here, do work within the schools themselves. So we have 10 different uh, schools that we send education majors to and they'll teach for the week. Uh, finally, we also do a field day at the Beacon School and that will take place next Friday where we work with the students and uh, I believe this year's topic is, is track and field. The winter season is here and the dramatic change of weather conditions can bring with it colds and flu. Tonight, a primary care physician is offering important tips to help prevent you from falling victim to the common cold or flu. Megan Shepard reports. Primary care physician Dr. Leviticus Roll notes that with the drop in temperatures usually comes with an uptick in certain illnesses, particularly upper respiratory tract infections. From the common cold and flu to more serious illnesses such as laryngitis or bronchitis. We've also been seeing uh, outbreaks of, of flu-like illnesses in and around the workplace, uh, particularly areas where ventilation is poor. And, and that is where you want to be especially vigilant to make sure you're using your hand sanitizers. <clears throat> and if you're around somebody who's coughing and sneezing with runny nose and obviously you want to spend less time, less face-to-face -face time, if you're sharing paperwork, you're sharing meals, then make sure you exercise uh, precaution and, and to curtail the spread of these illnesses. Royal notes that prevention is key. Be sure to wash your hands often and fuel your body with proper vitamins. Another tip during the chilly weather is to try and stay warm as the cold weather causes your blood vessels to narrow. It may start with a very vague headache, a bit of a sore throat, um, and that may last 24 to 48 hours before you start to get real symptoms such as fever and chills and, and, and cough and, and sneezing and runny nose. So be, be cautious with the vague symptoms, particularly if you've been around somebody with the flu and all of a sudden there's this unexplained headache that's been lasting 24 hours. We're feeling a bit fatigue, a bit of malaise, and that, that's the time to be vigilant because um, they, they do start um, quite vague. He adds that symptoms may start off very vague, so it is important to pay attention to any signs your body may be giving you. Being fit and, 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 and proper prior to, to these kinds of illnesses is what really is protective. And so if you're getting your regular exercise, your regular diet, you're taking your multivitamins or a vitamin C per day, then that's going to that's going to at least prevent you from getting these illnesses to begin with. Um, but typically, for example, if you're down with the flu, or taking vitamin C doesn't help a whole lot, and you have it. Um, we've had a number of patients that, that that came in requesting flu shots because they have the flu. And that's not the purpose of a flu shot. The flu shot is meant to be preventative. Um, <clears throat> if you if you have the flu, then that just needs to be treated with um, proper medications, uh, with rest. Um, and, and try to avoid the spread by, by avoiding uh, contact with other persons who are not, who are not affected. Megan Shepard, SNS Network News. Thanks, Megan. And now it is time to ask the doctor. Hi, and welcome. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt. Judy T. from NASA asked, my friend told me that he has severe muscle pains for the past two days after lifting weights at the gym. Should he see a doctor? Thank you for your question. It seems that your friend might have overworked himself at the gym and some muscle injury and strain might have occurred. 
it is possible that he may have a condition known as rhabdomyolysis. This is a serious syndrome due to direct or indirect muscle injury. It results from the death of muscle fibers and release of contents into the bloodstream, which can lead to complication. There are many causes for rhabdomyolysis, some of which include the use of alcohol or illegal drugs like cocaine, extreme muscle strain, especially in someone who is an untrained athlete, severe burns, crush injury, or bad fall, medications like statins, which are used to lower cholesterol, and seizures. So to answer your question, Judy, I recommend that he is seen by a doctor immediately, especially if he feels dehydrated, has red or brown urine, or has stopped producing urine. With prompt treatment, he can experience a full recovery, but if treatment is delayed, he may be at a risk of serious complications, including kidney failure. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt, and this has been Ask the Doctor. Don't go away, a check on sports is up next with Ricardo Lightborn.